What it do, y'all? It's your boy King Ed the Great coming at y'all with another video. Subscribe and hit the like button for me. Off the cuff radio, school ball radio. So, I want to talk about Scarface's last of a dying breed album, which was one of his best albums. Even though he said in his book he wasn't really liking it. Because, see, we got to take in mind that when an artist say they're not feeling some particular work, they often go back to the time frame of the events that was going on when they was creating that art. And a lot, and at that time period, rap a lot was going through a lot. They had went through a new distribution deal with Virgin Records that wasn't as strong as their previous distributors. The FBI was heavily on rap a lot's head. And plus, they had dropped that album in what would be a star studded year. I mean, 2000, who, who came out? Buster dropped the album. Jay-Z dropped the album. Ja Rule dropped the album. Uh, Red Man dropped the album, I think. Uh, Wu-Tang, Exhibit, Snoop, Eminem. Everybody was dropping albums. Every month was hot. And Face sort of got lost in the shuffle. Even though... That first single was the draw to me when they did the Eric Sermon produced single, It Ain't Ish to Me, because I like the message that he was sending out. Because at that time, that flossing ish was out there. Chris Style Pop, It Ain't Ish to Me. It just pop, It Ain't Ish to Me. That's what I like. That was the message that he put out. Like, even though a lot of these guys are popping bottles and doing the champagne and big willying it up. Because Cash Money and Jay-Z were the forefronts of that. Face is like, nah, man, I ain't tripping off that. I'm, I'm doing me. So we go into this album. He talked a lot about what was going on with rap a lot at the time. If you listen to the songs like Look Into My Eyes and Conspiracy Theory. Where, the, where they were talking about how the DA was trying to take them, take them down. He got more detail on those songs. And also about a possible snitch. In that, and within the rap a lot camp, I could be wrong, but another thing I noticed about this album that there was more features. Other than the My Homies album, this album had more face feet, more um features than ever any Scarface album. Like I noticed the one with Get Out and Enyo with Red Man and Jay Z respectfully. That told me right there that Face was gonna try to get make a leap to Def Jam. Because those were two of Def Jam's biggest artists at that time. And I was thinking, okay, Face going to try to make that transition. Which he eventually did. That was Olive Branch. One of my other favorite songs up there was OG the BG with Daz Corrupt and J.L. Felly. And let me be the first to say, J.L. Felly, he killed this joint. J.L. Felly and Corrupt, they killed it. And another favorite that I had was In and Out. It's basically Sex Faces Part 2 with Devin the Dude and Too Short. Only one that's missing was Tell Him. But one of my favorite lines of that album was like, you be buying you be buying flowers. I be buying I be buying condoms. You be buying candy. <laughs> it was a I mean that's one of them um, smooth songs that they they usually put out on every every album that face does. He he got to give something to the ladies, you know. But my other favorite song was what's the name? Is the one he did down with us with UGK. They paid homage to KRS One on that track with Number One, and Face was talking some itch on that joint. I'm thinking it was probably going at Lil Troy on this joint. Like Face was talking some smack here. And of course, you know, when you got Pimp C in the building, that energy's gonna rub off on you. So you know Face was a little more animated there. But another favorite song, and see what makes Scarface such a unique artist is his abilities to really channel into a dark era in his music to where you can see his pain and what he's going through. He could put emotion in his music like no other. That's where Biggie, Tupac, DMX, Jay-Z, all these guys, Nas, they all study Face's blueprint. And that song, Sorry For What, that song was heavy. I put that up there with 
always see a man always always seen a man die. Um now what's the name of that? Now I feel you. That's up there with one of his best songs, man. Because he really got in debt with his anxiety. He really got in debt with his the battles that he was going through with his personal demons. I mean that song is heavy. He talked about it more in his book. When he said when he was talking about I swear I feel I, I so all alone back down on my knees again, hoping you could keep me strong because I can't hardly sleep tonight. I took too many sleeping pills. I drunk too many Miller lights. And I could feel the grim I could feel the reaper near. So please forgive me for my sins. I am just another man. Sorry for the pain I've caused. Like that you could tell he was probably having a conversation with with the devil and the angel. And he paint that picture so vividly. But overall, this was one of his faces dopest albums here, man. Definitely check it out if you can, man. I got the cassette in the CD. So definitely check this album out, man. Last of a Dying Breed from Scarface. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Peace.